Hello, and welcome to another edition of Cracking Cryptic. Um, we're going to look at an interesting Sudoku puzzle today, which has been uh, suggested by one of the viewers. Um, now, this is an interesting puzzle for a few reasons, um, one of which is it's pretty difficult, and it's pretty difficult at a very early stage. So, um, what I've done on the screen at the moment is I've marked in some of the pencil marks that I found uh, just at the beginning of the solve. So those of you who have been following the channel will know what we like to do is in any 3x3 three three box where we can uh, limit the position of a single number to two cells then we make little marks. So a 3 could only go in this cell here and this cell here in this top right hand box. Um, and that takes you to this position. I may have missed a couple of pencil marks but I don't think I've missed too much. And you can see I've got this interesting little 3-9 uh, pairing up here and I can use that you can see uh, I can actually lock the position of a 3 in here so let's just put that in um, like that uh, it doesn't really help me at all uh, you can see I still need to place 1, 2, 7, 8 in this um, 5 letter or row 3 in which I have 5 numbers already but uh, looking at all the checking entries, it's not going to actually allow me to make uh, significantly more progress than I've already made. Uh, the only thing it might allow me to do, I suppose, is to put five, no, not sixes, fives into those two positions by way of pencil marks. But again, it's not opening up the grid. And so in a speed solving scenario, you'd be faced with a choice um, at this sort of juncture. You could go through um, the logic that I'm about to explain to try and um, to try and crack it. Now, the problem with that logic is that there is no guarantee, even with a you know half an hour of grid scare, uh, staring, you'll find the logic. It's hidden quite deeply in this one, and it's um, I mean it's it's a beautiful thing if you do find it. And the first time you actually find one of these things called a swordfish, um, it's uh, a really you know it's a great day in your um, uh, Sudoku solving life um, but you don't come across these every day and they are not easy to spot and what's more even you know even with decent technique uh, there's no guarantee you'll find them. Um, the other option which is the one I would definitely use in this situation is to, to bifurcate. Now bifurcate is a three-syllable word that has a one word or one-syllable equivalent, which is guess. And here, what I probably guess is uh, the three nine here. I pick one of them, quickly run through and see whether a contradiction was forced. And normally, if you pick a good number, um, and this sort of double is a good example of a good place to guess, because by guessing one of these numbers, you already get another number immediately. And in fact, you can see really with the threes here, you know, if I guess a three here, that gives me a three here, that gives me a three here, that gives me a three here, it gives me a seven here, it gives me a seven here, it gives me a lot of uh, numbers immediately. And within 30 seconds, I could have, uh, you know, filled in probably another 15 numbers in the grid. And even if that proves to be wrong, I've wasted a minute, a minute and a half. I've not wasted half an hour. But some of you, uh, I know, are logic, you know, don't, they don't think, or you don't think that guessing is a good uh, technique. Um, sometimes I'm inclined to agree with you, but um, I've spotted another pair of fives I can put in there. doesn't matter, won't help. Um, uh, and so you want to know how to, you know, what is the logical basis for solving this puzzle without needing to bifurcate? Well, there is a way, um, and I shall try and explain it. And I'm going to start by just having a look at a simple, um, at the sort of stepping stone onto a swordfish, which is what we have with the sevens. Uh, I've got two sevens here and two sevens here. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means something about where sevens can appear in this central 3x3 three three box, um, because these sevens form a sort of X shape in, in the grid. Um, and they are locked into columns four and column six. So it's fairly straightforward, I think, to see that if we put a seven in this cell, 
that will give us a 7 here. And if we put a 7 in this cell, that will give us a 7 here. Either way, whichever way around we choose, there definitely cannot be a 7 here, 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 here. It's impossible here, 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 obviously, as well. So that will completely rules out 7 from being in the, this position, this position, this position, and this position. Now, look, we have a 7 here in the middle row. So now I'm actually able to place another pencil mark for 7s in this middle 3x3 three three box. Um, because of this sort of X, it's called an X wing type pattern that we see here. Now, the question is, and what, what a swordfish is just an extension of that logic, applying to three columns or three rows. And we'll have a look at one of those in a minute because there is actually one that you can find in this grid. But the question I think that is a better question is not, is there a swordfish? It's how would you find the swordfish? What would make you look for the swordfish? And the answer to that, and it's not a particularly brilliant answer, but it, it is a sort of answer, is that if you were trying to solve this from this position, you need to find um, you know, parts of rows and columns or three by three boxes that are highly restricted. And the normal place you'd start to find those sorts of things are with the uh, rows and columns that contain a lot of given digits, so for example row 3. But the other thing you can look for, the slightly more exotic thing you can look for, might be a row or a column that doesn't contain a great deal of uh, existing digits, but it will check a box that contains two or three digits that are not in, uh, that are not already given in that row. So let's just take a look, for example, at row 8 here. Now row 8, we have a 7, a 6, and a 9. Now normally you might think, well, that's, you know, what use is that? We've got to place a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 8 in this box. Well, the reason it's mildly interesting, and it might attract your attention, is that if we scan across to this 3x3 three three box here, we can see that two of those missing numbers are actually already in this box and three of the cells in row 8 are open. So there cannot be a 3 or an 8 in any of these cells. Now that means that there must be a 3 and an 8 in two of these three cells where the cursor is at the moment. Now that's quite interesting because if you can narrow that down just slightly further then all of a sudden you'll have a way into the puzzle. Now how can we do that? Well it, the answer is it's not easy um, and I shall now try and explain what you need to look for. So just going back to it we know we, know we have to place 3 and 8 in these three cells and we can see a 3 up here. So if I can rule out an 8 from this box here, if this, if somehow, using some logical technique, I can say that this cell cannot contain an 8, then hopefully it's obvious to everybody that then the 3 and the 8 would have to be in this cell and this cell only. Yeah, And that, that would be, I think, quite useful in terms of solving the puzzle. Um, how can I rule out an 8 in this particular square? Now you can see just looking around, you know, there's no 8s up here. There's an 8 there, but that's not going to do, tell me a great deal about this one. Or is it? Well, this is where we have to think about the swordfish technique. So I want to pay particular attention here to columns 3, 5, and 7. And what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and ask ourselves, or I want us to ask ourselves, where can we place an 8 in columns 3, 5, and 7? None of them contain an 8 at the moment. But let's ask ourselves, where could an 8 go? Well, it can't go here anymore because we've limited this cell down to a 3 or a 9. It can go here, can go here, can't go here, and it can go here. It's got, so it's got three positions it could go in 
in column three. It can go here. Can't go in any of these three positions because of this eight. And it can go here. So just two open positions there in column five. And let's look at column seven. Well, it could go here. It could go here. Again, it can't go here. And this time it can't go in either of those cells either. So in fact, it can go in only two positions in column seven. Now let's look at which, whether there is any uh, overlap, if you like, between the places where, the only places where eights can go in these three columns. Well, clearly uh, within row two, there are three positions that are possible. Within row four, there are two positions that are possible. Now the only other place is row eight, where there are two positions it's possible. So, in fact, we have exactly the same situation that we had with these sevens, where, you know, if I put a seven here, we showed there would have to be a seven here. And, you know, whichever way round I selected it, there was no way more sevens could go in either columns four or column six. Well, here we have the same thing with the eights. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you by example, by putting these eights in, what I mean. So let's say, um, let's say, in fact, we'll start with this, this, this column just because there's only two open positions. Let's say that this was the eight. What would that mean? If this was the eight, then this would have to be an eight. And then this would have to be an eight. So again, they couldn't, in this example, rows two, rows four, and rows eight could not contain any other eights. It would be impossible. Well, you may say, well, but yeah, well, why does that matter? Well, let's, um, well, I'm hoping it will allow me to just, uh, yeah, it does good. Okay. Good. Okay. So that's what we've shown if this, we guess this was an eight. Let's do the same with this one. If this is an eight, what does that mean? Um, well, now this can't be an eight, but hopefully you can see that the pattern of the eights now is an X-wing. It's exactly the same as the pattern of sevens that I've just discussed. So look, this is an eight and this is an eight, this is an eight and this is an eight. These form an X. So again, there could not be Whichever way round I, I picked these eights to go, there couldn't be an eight in the other cells of rows two, rows four, and rows eight. So let's delete that one. Um, so that's for those two. What about this one? What if this was an eight? If this was an eight, again, we get another X wing, but this time with these eights. These two eights here and these two eights here. Okay, so it's exactly the same as this seven, but this time up here. So again, rows two, rows four, and rows eight cannot contain other eights. Now, what does all that tell us? Well, all of that tells us that this square here that we were focused on before, we were saying, is there a way of showing, because we know this can't be a three, is there a way of showing this can't be an eight? Well, there is. Using this swordfish technique, we would be able to say this can't be an eight either. And therefore, within row eight, we have this situation. So these open four positions have to be one, two, four, and five in some order. Why does that matter? Well, there are lots of reasons it matters, but a very simple reason it would matter is look, look at this five here, sliding this down. Now this five can't go in this position. So we could write in pencil marks into these two positions Therefore, this cell here would have to be a five. Let's put that in just to show you what I mean. One of that would be a five. Similarly, now I might want to take another look at column three because we've got a very restricted column now in the sense we've got five given numbers and we know this can't, this can only be a three or an eight. So you might say, where can we place a four in column three? Well, now uh, only in one position up here. Um, and that's quite interesting as well because it affects our swordfish. Um, so let's just show you what I mean there. This would have to be a four. 
Um, so remember we said that um, there couldn't be eights anywhere else along rows two, rows four, and rows eight because of the swordfish. Well now, neither of these positions therefore can take uh, can take an eight. Before this one could have taken an eight. Now it can't. So this would be the only position left that could contain an eight um, uh, in this three by three box. Um, we can quickly see, I think, that this is really uh, it's going to make a dramatic difference to how quickly you can solve the puzzle. Now you get twos locked in here, which gives us a two seven pair here. This forces this to be a one, etc. So, I mean, the point of this video isn't to go through the solve of a Sudoku once it's sort of you've done the hard part. The point was to try and show you that the swordfish can be useful if you really, really want to, you know, find very logical solutions to these puzzles. Um, why is it called a swordfish, by the way? Well, it's not because of the arrangement we saw here. It's because typically it's um, the example of it. You know, you'll see uh, one of the numbers up here, one down here, one down here, one down here. Um, and it sort of propagates down the grid in such a way that some people, when they look at it, claim they can see a swordfish. Um, I can't. So the name is, is not the important thing. The thing you have to remember is you're looking for a number that can appear in only three positions, three of the open positions in any uh, in any row or column, and then you're trying to find that number again limited to those particular rows and columns in two other rows and columns, if you see what I mean. Um, so that's what you're looking for. If you can find it, you can conclude that you won't see that number anywhere else um, in this situation here. It was the rows where we were able to eliminate it. So an esoteric technique, an interesting technique, um, not one I'd recommend at all if you're interested in speed solving, um, um, but um, for those of you who, who like rigorous logic, I hope this has been interesting. Thanks for watching.